and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to look at how you can build libraries that will work in both Node.js and the web. So if you have a library that you distribute and you want to make sure that it works both uh, in the browser and in the Node.js environment, this video is for you. So I'll start with a bug report uh, because I actually recently implemented this in one of our libraries. And what happened was that React or Create React app just recently updated their scripts to use Webpack 5. And this caused this error right here. So you can't resolve crypto in uh, one of these submodules. And it turns out that in one of our submodules, we were using a package called UUID. And the UUID is using the crypto module. And previously in Webpack 4, they would bundle the polyfills into uh, your bundle. So you, you would have polyfills available for you. So if you had a uh, target node, uh, you would have polyfills for that and so forth, which made sure that things were actually working um, cross-platform pretty well. But since Webpack 5 came, they removed these polyfills that they previously included in the bundle. So now, you have to be more conscious about which uh, target you're building for. Uh, and th there were edge cases or other cases that you had to be mindful of be before, but um, now you have to be more explicit, which is a good thing, I think. Um, so I'm gonna show you the code as well now, uh, and we'll see how we solve this and how you can solve it in the same way. So if we go to the code and we look at the Webpack config, um, this was basically the entire config uh, before. So we had an entry point, we had an output section, uh, we had some rules for how to handle the ESX files. And then we had actually this target was the one we were using. So target node, and it was causing issues in the browser now because uh, of this crypto package that I mentioned. So what did we do? Well, we took the base config here, we extracted it into a get common config, and we took an output file name as the parameter. And then we created two Webpack uh, configurations, one for the client and one for the server. So for the client, we set the target to be web. And for the server, we set the target to be node, which ensures that you get the proper bundle contents for the target environment that you are building for. So once we had that, we module export this as an array, both of the configurations. And then what you end up with in the distributed file is an index browser JS and an index JS. And here is the interesting part, I think. So, Having two files complicates which of the files are going to be picked uh, when you're using the library. Now, luckily, there are some smart people that have thought about this already. So what we can do in the package.json file is that we can say that the main file, and here we default to the Node.js distribution. That's the default file that we are specifying for this package. And then we have this browser field. And this is basically saying, if you are building for a browser environment, this is the file that you're going to be using. And this makes it really flexible because um, for the people who are using module bundlers, this npm package hint will make sure that the module bundler, bundler picks the correct file uh, when it's creating the total package. So I think that's it for this one. Uh, it's a short video, but I think it's really helpful to uh, look at how you can use Webpack in this way and how you can build for these two widely different uh, targets without a lot of hassle and uh, especially to the end user. So thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one.